Good morning. Uh, I'm here today to have another go at looking at recurrence relationships for year 11 essential mathematics. I'm going to take a different path with it today. We're going to look at what happens to the value of either your savings or your debt over a few years and look at the patterns. Because recurrence relations are just a way of explaining the patterns that go on between different years or months or days. We're going to make it a simple situation. We're going to assume we're invested over a number of years, three years. We're going to make interest calculated every year. We're going to make it as simple as possible and look at the patterns. Then we will reintroduce the idea of recurrence relations, which explain the patterns that we see. All right, so to start with, let's say, what are we gonna say? $6,000 invested, or what? $6,000 debt? $6,000 debt. You've taken out some bad debt here. The people you've dealt with are not good people. Don't do this in life. They're charging you 20% 20, 20 interest. Have a look. So we're going to look at both the simple interest and the compound interest situation. The compound interest situation you'll be looking at more later in the week. But I want to make sure we're looking at the idea of recurrence relationship for both situations because it's slightly different. Now, let's have a go at that. I've written here the simple interest formula. I've written here the compound interest formula. So P is your initial value. So in both cases, P is 6,000. It's hard to write with the baby wriggling. R, I and R in these formulas are both interest rate, but it has to be as a decimal. So you need to divide by 100. So in both cases, I, if you get 20 and divide it by 100, you can write it as a fraction. You can write it as 20 over 100. Just to make life a bit easier here though, I'm just going to write it as 0.2. Right? 0.2 is what you get if you do 20 divided by 100. Now, the third bit, N, N is the year. So n here would be 1, n for year 2 would be 2, n for year 3 would be 3. So I'm not going to write n just there. Now if we sit here and carefully put the values in a calculator, and I actually will need a calculator here. Baby, where did I put the calculator? Is anywhere I put the calculator, baby? This is a bit of a problem. Oh, man. All right, got a calculator. I also got caught up in something weird here. All right, so if you, the starting value was $6,000. We said that before. Now, if you put this formula, there are examples in the other lessons. I'm not going to do it all in great detail here. But if you go 6,000 times 0 0.2 times 1 for the first year, it'll tell you that you will earn $1,200 in interest. If you've earned that much interest, then the total amount you'll have after one year is $7,200. Right? Principal plus interest gives you the amount of money you'll have at the end of the first year. Now, if you put N is 2 in to work out how much interest you got after two years, it's going to tell you $2,400 worth of interest. Again, if you add it to the original, you'll get this. Do the same for three years, you'll end up with $9,600 is what the investment's worth after three years. All right, on the compound interest side, we need to do the same thing. We're starting with $6,000. All right, so $6,000 times... 1 plus 0.2, I'm just using this formula here, that there are examples in the other lesson. It'll tell you that after one year, it's worth 7,200. 
at the moment it's the same as simple interest. That will happen. If you use this formula again, because A is the final value, so it's a bit quicker with the compound interest, I just put the values in there, it tells me how much debt you've got. Because remember, we're talking about bad debt here to bad people. Right? So, if I put in this formula with N is 2 for the second year, I'll get 8,640. If I do the same with that formula and put in 3, you'll get 10,368. Now, what I want to emphasize here when I can uh, find some different colored markers, where do you put them, bub? Something interesting is happening each time. There are patterns forming here. What are those patterns? What's happening each time? If you look at it very closely, you'll realize that this one in particular has a very clear pattern that you can see. It's going up by the same amount each time. That's what happens with simple interest. Right? In simple interest, you earn the same interest each year. So every year, it's adding how much? How much is it adding every year? You can see it's adding 1,200. Right? I'm recording video. Over here, the relationship's a bit different. With compound interest, you're actually multiplying by the same thing each time. It's not so obvious. But you'll find that what you are doing each time here is you are multiplying by 1 plus the interest rate, which in this case, the interest rate is 0.2. So you're actually multiplying by 1.2 each time. So if you had the value of your debt to the mafia for one year, all you have to do is multiply it by 1.2 and you'd find your debt to the mafia for the next year, which is very useful if you've got a large debt to the mafia, right? So what do you think, baby? You agree? Now, you can see from this that you can work out your debt from one year to another. In the simple interest case, you can work out your debt from one year to another simply by add uh -oh, adding 1,200. On the other hand, in compound interest, you can work out your debt from one year to another by multiplying by 1.2. If you know how much debt you had this year, multiply it by 1.2, you will get the debt for the next year. Multiply it by 1.2 again, you will get the debt for the year after that. With your simple interest, if I had the debt this year, I add 1,200, I know how much debt I've got the year after that. Add another 1,200, I'll have the debt for the year after that. Now. What recurrence relationships do, this is the important thing, recurrence relationships, all they do is state this in a formula, right? They state this relationship of one year to the next in a formula. So we'll keep the simple and the compound interest separate, right? So for simple interest, for simple interest, all we do here is you've got this formula and it looks horrible. Vn plus 1 equals Vn plus D. However, it's not that bad. The value next year is equal to the current year plus a certain amount. So in our example up there, the certain amount that was being added each year is... How much was being added each year? I don't know. I wasn't making it. How much was being added each year? You can see that. <laughs> it does also say it there. It just looks confusing. I don't get it. Oh, thanks, Rose. You, that's <laughs> not the most helpful advice I've ever got. All right. Anyway, as you can see... Dad, you're teaching year eight. No, I'm not. This is year 11. Now, now, we're adding the same amount each year. As we discussed, if you look at the pattern, it's adding 1,200 each year. That is your, current, your recurrence relationship. That's it. All it says is... That's the value this year. If I add, 
if I add 1,200 onto it, I get the value next year. So technically, do you want to go down? Have you had enough of a right? Okay, okay. Go take over the world. My shirt's falling apart too. All right. So an N there, N simply means the year. So, you know, you could say that's year zero. If you saw V0 anywhere, V0 means the value at year zero. V2 would be the value at year two. And in turn, Vn is the value at year n. All right, we're just saying it's the value for any year. But that's the whole idea. That's all the recurrence relationship shows with simple interest. The value this year is the value last year plus a certain amount. In this case, it's $1,200. Dad, why can't we just like, just get the number that you're paying every year and just take that away from the number that you got? Wouldn't that be just easier than writing all these letters? I know, and <laughs> the text has done it this way. And I don't want people confused between what I'm doing and what the text is doing. So I just have to show it this way. Personally, I've never used this in my life. I would do it using, I would use this sort of formula to be working this out. No, I just use the No, no, use the formula. You get to get used to this. Go, that's your no, lesson later today. I'll, I'll, I will sort you out later. No. Now, you realize this is going on the internet. Now, here on compound interest, the formula was a little different. It looked like this. Vn plus 1 equals Rvn. Uh, again, that means the value next year. That means the value this year. But as discussed, in simple interest, we add to get one year from get the next year, while with compound interest, we multiply, right? Add for simple interest, multiply for compound interest. Now this R here happens to be 1 plus the interest rate. As we discussed in our case above here, the interest rate was 20%, which is 0.2. So R is 1.2. Guess what we found earlier? What did we have to multiply by each time to find the value next year? We multiplied by 1.2. And that's essentially what this rule says. To find the value from one year to the next, we multiply by 1.2. This formula only shows what we already know. We know that to get from one year to the next, we multiply by 1.2. We multiply by 1 plus the interest rate. Yep. I just had my the chalk stolen. Um, okay. So that's recurrence relationships. I'll again point out, yep, that's the value next year. That's the value this year. You could also from this use some logic to go backwards if you were feeling particularly excitable. If we add $1,200 to find the value next year, what if we had some year and we wanted to find the value the previous year? What will we do? We'd do the opposite. Instead of adding, we would subtract. So if I wanted to know the previous year, I'd subtract 1,200 instead of add 1,200. Also over here, if I wanted to know the opposite of multiplying by 1.2, if I wanted to know the previous year, instead of multiplying by 1.2, what's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. Dividing, exactly. So if I wanted to know the value the previous year, I'd divide by 1.2. You can try that out, have some fun. If I had that value and I divided it by 1.2, I should get that value there. Isn't that funky? Anyway, whole point, recurrence relationships merely show the relationship between the value one year and the next year. For simple interest, that means you add something. For compound interest, that means you multiply something. I hope this make thing, makes things a little bit clearer and I am now going to recover the rampage of a mess around my area here. If you have any more questions on this, please make them very specific and 
email me. You know where I am. Bye.